What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com back with another twin motion tutorial for you. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a stylized rendering using the style settings inside of your images in twin motion. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so if you want to download this model from SketchUp and follow along, this is the school by Max Achofsky. And uh, what we want to do in this video is we want to talk about how to create a stylized rendering inside of twin motion. And what I mean by that is instead of creating a rendering where everything looks photorealistic, we're going to take a look at a way to create images inside of Twin Motion that have more styles assigned to them. So that means that this is going to adjust the way that the edges and the faces look inside of your rendering. And so in order to do that, um, you add that inside of medium mode whenever you create your images. And if you remember, you're, um, creating your images is where you uh, change the visual properties and other things like that. Um, inside of your rendering in order to change the way that your rendering is going to look. So to start off, we're going to go into our media mode. We're going to click on the button for image and we're going to create a new image. And so off to the side, you can see how this gives us our new image. And if you remember, you can come in here and you can adjust things like the time of day and other things like that. So we're just going to adjust this time of day until we get a little bit of shadow on this big open space right here. So it doesn't look quite as unrealistic with all the open space just kind of sitting there um, with nothing to fill it or anything like that. So we've got our shadows set, but what we want to do now is we want to go into our more settings and we want to focus specifically on this last option, which is the option for visual effects. So that option is where you're going to be able to add those different effects to your model or to your rendering. And so there's three different kinds of effects that you can add. You can add color gradient, which is going to allow you to adjust the colors inside of your model. There's filters, which is going to give you kind of a specialized style for each one of these. And then a clay render, which allows you to render without actually having materials applied. And one thing I'm going to do really quick is I'm just going to go into my uh, camera settings. I'm going to change my field of view down a little bit. It's kind of bothering me that my field of view is quite so wide in that image. But we're going to go into our visual effects and just take a look at each one of these. So color gradient allows you to add um, almost like an Instagram filter to your view. It's going to be almost like a filter that you would put over your camera lens that kind of adjusts the saturation and the contrast and the way that your image looks. And you can see how there's a bunch of different presets in here allowing you to create different things. So you can create black and white images, you can create black and white with kind of a red tint. Um, there's a whole bunch of different filters in here to allow you to kind of change the way that your colors look. So you can use this um, if you want to to make something look a little more like even evening, a little more like nighttime, things like that. There's actually a bunch of different color options in here. So you can adjust this and use this to adjust the way that these, uh, these colors look. In addition, there's some additional customization that you can do using these sliders. So I can drag this up and down in order to adjust how strong the contrast is inside of this image. So the contrast is going to be basically the difference between your light and your darks. The higher up that's going to be, the more different those are going to be. The lower down it's going to be, the less difference you're going to have between your lights and your darks. And you can see if you have that set at 0%, then there is no difference between your lights and darks and you can't actually see anything. And then the saturation is just going to adjust the color saturation in your image. So you can see how if I drag this up, that means that my colors are going to become more um, vivid and saturated, but also a little less realistic. So you can see how these people, um, especially with this filter applied are almost like a bright orange color. So you want to adjust that a little bit and that's still kind of in there anyway just due to the color gradient that I had selected. But you can see how by adjusting this you can adjust how much your colors pop but you need to be careful not to oversaturate them or they don't look realistic anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set this back to none for right now. And now let's take a look at the second set of options that you have for changing the way this looks, which is filters. So filters actually change kind of the visual properties of the materials and the edges in here um, to really kind of change the way that they, that, to really give you a wide range of different looks in here. So like for example, there's looks in here like this one, which makes your image look more like it was drawn with a ballpoint pen. And it adds a little background back here. Um, there's options in here to make this look more like a blueprint 
So if you wanted to export a blueprint image, you could do that using these settings. Um, there's some different comic book settings. And then also the ones that I probably find the most useful are the line heavy, line light, and line regular. And what those do is those kind of overlay lines on the edges inside of your rendering in order to really kind of highlight those edges. And one thing I wish we had that we don't with this uh, with this series of options is I wish we had the ability to kind of um, to kind of adjust the way that these filters work a little bit so like for example I really wish in the line light that I could then have like a slider or something like that to adjust how thick or not thick those lines are these are kind of fixed meaning you kind of get what you get so you just have to kind of find something that you like and go with it you'll notice that like with this line regular I would like to bring this line thickness down a little bit especially on my trees or be able to apply it to things selectively and that option just really isn't in here right now maybe it's something that'll get added later but you can use these to adjust the look and feel of your rendering and then the last option in your styles or your visual effects is the ability to do a clay render. And so a clay render is a rendering that you do where you turn off um, the materials and you just apply a color to your rendering instead. So what this does is this allows me to focus much more on like shadows and things like that. And so I'm probably going to go back into my color gradient real quick and just bring my saturation down a little bit more. Um, probably turn my contrast. I'll probably leave my contrast the way that it is. But just notice that that's actually affecting the way that this looks. Well, what you can do with a clay render is you can actually set this and maybe adjust this color to something like a gray or something like that. Um, but you can set this so that you can really kind of focus on where your shadows are being cast. So basically what this does is this removes the distraction of the materials and lets you focus on the lighting. So that's one thing that clay renders are used for is to really kind of focus on the lighting in your scene rather than the materials. And so one cool thing about the clay render settings is you can actually set what this is applied to. Like for example, I could turn off the clay render on my vegetation or on my characters so that the environment around them is a clay render, but the characters themselves are not. Or maybe a better application would be if I turn this off here for everything except my vegetation, I could actually use this to highlight my vegetation by applying a clay render just to that. So we could apply a clay render to our trees here, and then we could apply a color, like a red, like this, and we could use that to highlight these trees if we wanted to. So you could actually use this in an image to highlight different things using the clay render function. And so the nice thing about this is it's uh, more customizable than say the filters or something like that. So you can adjust this color. You can also adjust how strongly the reflection is coming off of different surfaces. If you turn this way up, this almost acts like, um, like it has wet surfaces in here or something like that this and then the bump map is if these had maps applied to them I'm pretty sure what that would do is that would actually apply a bump to that so you could actually see the roughness of different objects if I fly into this tree for example I think you're getting a little bit of that in here um, because I think there's a bump map applied to this trunk but I couldn't tell you that for a hundred percent certainty and then one other thing that you might want to consider when you do something like this is you might want to consider combining these effects. And so specifically what I'm talking about, and I'm going to brighten this up just a little bit, well, specifically what I'm talking about is in this case you might want to have this clay render in here, but you may want to go back into your filters and select one of the options for your lines. And so what this is gonna do is this is gonna render this out as a clay render, but then your lines are gonna be highlighted in here because that's what that effect does. That effect highlights the edges inside of your model rather than the faces. So you could combine things like your clay render and the different styles in order to create the look that you're going for. And then once you're done, once you've got this kind of set up the way that you want it, you can see how, um, 
You can see how this image is going to give you a preview of the way that it looks, but we're just going to render that out just like we would anything else in Twin Motion. We're just going to go into the export settings, we're going to select our image, and we're just going to click Start Export. And we'll just pick our folder and click Select Folder. And so that's going to export that image to that folder. And then when we open that up, that gives us a full render in here um, with the highlighted edges and also the clay render. So it really gives you the ability to kind of adjust the way that this looks and customize that. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Um, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this feature, if it's something you would use, or if you have any special tips about using this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button button for new rendering content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.